Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing soldering iron restoration. And I feel that there's a lot of videos on YouTube about soldering iron tip cleaning and different formulations of what they claim to be cleaning the iron. Um, and I think that a lot of them are just really misunderstanding what I think many people want to see. And I know what I want to see, and that is that when I see an iron like this, where we can see we got all this carbon on the barrel, matter of fact, you can see them gloved up here, got all this carbon on the barrel. This is one of those El Cheapo wellers that you get at Home Depot for about five bucks. And the reason I wanted to choose this iron, because this is one that I've had for a long time, I've used it for many hours, and like many of you, you have irons like this where you're starting to see oxidation on the barrel. Uh, this unit actually has a screw-in tip, nothing fancy. I mean, this is as basic as you're going to get. They did try to incorporate a little technology with some little, little small LEDs in there. But overall, you can see this case probably like 70 or 80 hours of use. The iron doesn't start to heat properly, and you notice that you start getting degraded performance. You can see the tip is starting now. It's got a little bit of solder on there, but it's definitely carbonized. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what my definition of soldering iron restoration is. Not just cleaning the tip. I mean, many of you know you can go on YouTube and see how you can use, you know, the copper ball or um, in my case, I have the Yiwa automatic tip cleaner. And of course, I'm not using my Yiwa in this video because I wanted to show you an iron in much poorer condition. I find a lot of times when we see these videos, you know, like my iron starting right now and you can see she's getting ready to be cleaned again. Now this is a stainless barrel. All of this is stainless steel. Okay, so when I actually uh, utilize all the components I'm going to in my kit, because I wanted to put a kit together for this specific purpose because I've never seen one done the right way and in a simplistic form, you'll be able to use it for not only stainless barrels, but also the El Cheapo barrels, which usually these are stainless as well. Um, but usually what you find is that the, uh, the actual gauge of the stainless may not be the same. So again, we definitely want to remove all of this oxidation. We want to put a nice high sheen polish on here to protect the metal. And when we're protecting it, as it, it achieves oxidation levels again, we'll be able to remove it more easily. Okay, I've seen every video from sandpaper being used, just ridiculous amounts of abrasives. And I'm going to show you the way that I feel will give you professional results over and over again. If you want to do your own soldering iron restoration, whether it be just um, natural preventative maintenance on your iron, which once again on my Yiwa, you can see I'm getting ready to clean her as well. She's got now about another 10 hours of use. You can see the barrel starting to show oxidation. We're getting a, a discoloration here. All of that should be removed in order to make sure that we get Prim uh, the prime amount of heat that we're supposed to get, so soldering is as easy as possible. A lot of guys, they don't understand that. The more oxidation you get, it's no different than your stove when you're building up carbon. And that carbon keeps building and building and building and building in between the pan and where your stove's burner is. You're not getting the same heat level. And that's exactly what happens here. We're waiting for the barrel to transfer heat to our tip. And once that happens, you'll find you get perfect soldering all the time because you're maintaining temperature. As soon as you stop maintaining temperature, you're in trouble. And the best way to explain this video, because uh, again, I think there's many online, is that you have a lot of different guys that talk about this in theory because they're not relying on soldering to make a living. I rely on, rely on my tools with soldering to literally make a living. So what I'm showing you and the tools I'm providing you are everything I would do and do in-house and you'll see the end results. Okay guys, in this part of the video, I've already taken off the tip, which once again, in this iron is very simple. My kit's gonna include different grades of Scotch-Brite. Now these are made by 3M, many of you are familiar with them. Um, they have different grades and they come in different colors as far as abrasiveness. These are much more user-friendly than any type of sandpaper or anything at that level of abrasiveness. Really what we're trying to do is mitigate how abrasive we're using and also use a formulation of restoration powder. And that's exactly what I have here. And I'm gonna be offering this. And all I did was put it on a plate and you can see I cut off a little wedge of the actual Scotch-Brite and I just put a little bit of water on there and the water on the pad itself 
will, once you actually put the powder on the plate, you'll just pat it. And what you'll notice is it sticks to the pad. Now once we have that, you can see I've got my gloves on, of course. And all we're going to do is start lightly, and I mean really lightly, coming over. Nothing special here, a little elbow grease. Kind of boring to watch, but this is it. And you'll notice, we're starting to get clean, boys. Okay, very, very simple to do. Very simple to do. And you notice I'm just going vertical pattern. I'm not, I'm not trying to spiral it. You can do that if you'd like. I recommend going one actual pattern, and that'll help when we do polishing afterwards. It depends on your iron. And again, red is the more aggressive scotch bright. And once again, you, I always recommend trying the minimal aggression, and then we work up to maximum aggression. Okay? Because this... The actual oxidation removal powder is very, very strong. And it works extremely well for this application. You can see, we're definitely coming much, much cleaner. Oxidation's coming right off. Now you can be, if you grab uh, enough wedge, you can actually wrap the barrel, of course, and just come over and lightly, and I'm just basically grazing this. And you'll notice that as we come to the tip, that's always going to be the area that will have the most oxidation. We're going to come over here and we're just going to keep going with it. Just work it around. The longer the powder sits on here, the more you're going to find it's going to work its way through. And I'm just lightly using a little pressure. You notice I'm not submerging the whole iron in water. I've seen guys do that. Uh, naturally, this is a piece of electronics. That's not the best thing to do. And it's not that you technically can't. I'm going to be honest with you. If you let it dry out, you're going to be fine under most circumstances. But why, why submerge a piece of electronics if you don't have to? That's my, like I said, we always stay with the minimal amount of aggressiveness to get the clean we want. And then we work our way up as required. Yeah, we're getting there now. You can definitely see this barrel is basically brand new. And there we go. We've got this back down stripped. Now I'm just hitting the tip. And again, we're definitely going to hit inside the threads. I'll show you how we'll do that. That takes a little more time because, again, those are, it's a much tighter constraint. But you can see... Okay. I'm just going to use a rag start taking everything off and now you can see this barrel's coming back to life very very easy you can see the pad do not throw these out I mean I cannot emphasize that enough I built the kit so that it would last I mean this will last you probably hell I've used mine now for at least six months and I'm doing this at a professional level using my iron every day if you're doing this casually you could this could last you years but I mean you can see the difference in the amount of time I just did this. And your iron is basically brand new. And this is it. This is as far as the, the cleanliness of the barrel. Now we know we've removed most of our oxidation right off the bat. We're good with that. The next step will be getting into refinement. And we want to seal this now. The metal we're going to seal with the proper polish so that as it heats up again, you're still going to get the oxidation buildup, but it'll be much easier to remove. And that's really what you want to do. And this is something that Weller and all the other brands really don't discuss with you because why would they want to? They're hoping you're eventually going to buy a new iron much faster than you have to. I see so many videos, like many of you, with irons where the barrels are black and they're worried about their tip. And it's kind of funny, if your barrel is black, all that oxidation and, and um, carbon is really going to affect the temperature. And this way you know you're basically set. Now I'm just going to hit the edge very lightly. You see we're not damaging any of our metal. We're not doing anything like that. There's no real hard abrasives being used here. We're using just a light buffing format with the scotch bright. In this case I'm using red because of the finish on this. Once again, you can start seeing the end is coming out of Mac. So this is basically clean now, okay? 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the video here because I'm trying to piece everything together so it'll all make sense, it's very simple to do. And then I'm gonna piece it together where we start now the polishing format. And I'll go over the polishing format and you'll see exactly how we restore this. Um, I will also cover tip restoration because uh, you can see this right here needs to be cleaned as well. And it's really the same process. This time I'm just inserting it in the pan, light pressure. And I'm, I mean, you can see I'm doing this at my desk. I'm not doing it. Matter of fact, I've overused some of the powder. You don't need much of this at all, but it works amazingly well. You see that tip coming right back. And this is prior to polishing as well, gentlemen, because you will want to polish everything. Now, the thing to keep in mind when I say polish, we don't want to polish where we're going to apply solder. We want to polish everything that we're not going to apply solder to because we want that area to be clean so that it will not interact with any of the flux, which of course must be used, and the solder we're going to be applying and once again using to weld with. So keep that in mind. But you can see here, look at this, this and this is all shot in real time. I'm not doing anything outside of that format to show you just how fast. And there you go. I'm going to hit the threads as well show you this process as well. And you'll notice your scotch bright as it wears, it starts getting thinner. You'll notice that it, it's, uh, its actual uh, reflex to come back, so to speak, to shape will be degraded. And that's totally normal. I'm using very little pressure. And I'm just cleaning the threads now real lightly. But why do we clean the threads? You should be cleaning anywhere that's going to make conduction with the barrel because that's heat transfer. So we want this to be as adept at heat transfer as possible, and therefore I'm taking my time. You can see how much time this takes to do. Once again, threads are coming really, really clean. So I'm going to continue this process. I won't bore you with it, but you can see real time how long this overall has taken so far. And then I'm going to go right into the polishing format. We'll finish it up, and I'll show you exactly the expectation you'll get when I feel you've done it in a method that meets more of the criteria of what most people I feel are looking for when they say cleaning your iron or restoring your iron. Because when I restore something, I want it to be as close to new or OEM specs as possible. And as an engineer, that's what I look for. So stay tuned for the next part. Okay guys, in this part of the video, you can see I've already began the polishing process. You can see this barrel is basically coming right back to life. And what I wanted to do is do part of it and show you the before and now the after. And again, this is being shot in 4K. I also want to show you the tip in the same format. You can see before, this is it cleaned. And then we're going to rotate it and you can see the after. And that, I feel, is what most people are looking for, this new finish. Now, once again, as I was cleaning over here, you can see... In the threads, we actually have the copper exposed, and I highly recommend doing that because, again, copper is a much better uh, conductor uh, than the actual plating they put over, especially as this being threaded in and out. It will naturally lose that plating anyhow, so don't be too concerned with that. Once this is polished, it'll look gorgeous, and it will definitely hold up, but you can definitively see a huge difference from just being cleaned and naturally all oils being removed to once again being polished. And it's the same thing with the barrel. You remember what this looked like in the beginning and the magic's in the bottle right here. And again, uh, I'll give you an ounce of this. This polish you use very, very sparingly. Bottle is precision, uh, is for precision application. So what you do, and I highly recommend it only using about a drop, that's plenty. And now what you're gonna do is take a Q-tip you're just going to spread it. That's it. That's all we do. Very, very simple. Now, you got two methods of polishing, okay? And you have to figure out uh, on which way you like best. I use my Dremel a lot for polishing because, again, for small parts like this, you're going to get a finish that's much, much easier to achieve as far as that high gloss. If you're looking at, you don't have an actual uh, Dremel tool or a similar tool, you can certainly do this by hand. Uh, I will be including in the kit one of my high-knit microfibers. This will not scratch anything, and this is an amazing towel. 
Uh, I use it on everything from electronics. It was custom designed for electronics, but for polishing, it's absolutely amazing as well. Uh, you can take this, you can see it's kind of, as it's actually uh, more or less evaporating polish, you can see that Q-tip, all the oxidation coming off. And you can see the sheen is starting to come out. And you can see I'm just doing this with a Q-tip. Okay. This will work on any metal. So you can test it out on any metal you like, whether it be copper, steel. Um, it works amazing um, on all different metals. But what I really find that I love it on is the heat treating abilities for soldering irons. And that's why, again, I put the kit together. These are all commercial grade uh, liquids and polishes. And you can see just how fast this is. I'm doing this with a Q-tip. I don't really need to document how, how difficult this is with a Q-tip. And you can see the shine that I'm getting just with that. If you were to do this now just by hand, you can let this dry to a slight haze if you like, or you can begin polishing lightly. And again, I love a white towel for polishing because it'll really show you the residue coming off. see exactly what's going on here. I'm not using any real pressure, just going over it. You can see, look at the mirror finish. That's the same piece, guys. Look at that. From this to this. So when we talk about new, when we talk about restoration, to me, this is restoration. This is assuring that your iron will stay new like this for years. And this way, when you grab this tool, you never have to worry about it working properly. This is really what the manufacturers, I feel, designed in terms of hoping that most people would do. They just usually don't know how to do it. And I've seen it on YouTube. They don't know how to achieve these results without killing yourself. You see the length of the video. You see everything. I'm using a Q-tip, for Christ's sake. This is not hard stuff. It really just takes a little due diligence to learn all the materials you're working with, and you're set. And that's why I put the kit together, because I'm getting more and more questions every day. How do you maintain your iron? What do you do? This is what I do. Now, inside these threads, that's a different area. We want to definitely clean inside there, and I'm going to show you a way to do that. And I'll cover that in the next part of the video, but again, to just show you how easy this is, There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll skip this part. I'll continue doing the rest of the iron. I mean, there's nothing here that I'm, I'm really pulling punches on and you're seeing exactly what's being done. On the second part, actually, well, I won't do that. What I'll do is on this part, let's cover the Dremel application. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, again, I'm just going to use a drop. You can see how fast this is with a right there. And with the Dremel application, I do the same process. I come over, I spread, but I don't want it to dry as much. I want to leave a little liquid there so I can buff it out. Just stay right here. Okay. Grab my Dremel. And again, I've got a little buffing wheel. You can use a large buffing wheel. I like a small buffing wheel on this, something this small because I have more control. I stay at about five to 10,000 RPM. Make sure nothing's in your way. Lay, I like to lay the unit right on the actual uh, desk. And then I'll just come over here and I'll graze it. And I see a lot of guys using a lot of different pressure. The big thing when you're polishing is to stay, stay as symmetrical as possible to the workpiece. And just actually just glide it across. We're not really pressing. You can hear the tool is basically doing all the work. I'm not really doing anything. I'm just kind of making contact with the barrel. And you can see that shine is really coming in. You can see exactly what you get. And if I, it's funny because there's actually enough residue here that I'll just hit a little spot here and you'll see what'll happen just with the Dremel. Again, I'm just gliding back and forth. Look at how it's removing all of that. Doing absolutely no work here. I'm just sitting here and gliding back and forth. The 
results are right there in front of you. That's how easy this is to work with before, after. And again, if you hit another coat on here, you can build it up. You'll find that there is a point of no return, so to speak. But as far as actually doing this, it's really addictive to do because you really get a beautiful finish. You know your tool is going to last basically forever. Um, on tips and things of this sort, it's the same thing. The Dremel is really, I'm just doing the end here. You can see the refinement. Sliding it over. And you can see that copper is really coming to life. And I'm just, I'm just using the residual residue on the actual buffing wheel. Very, very light pressure. You don't even hear the tool really slowing down. And you can see that copper is already coming to life that quick. So, again, same thing if you were doing this. Very light pressure. Stay as symmetrical as possible. Come back. And then just start rotating. Very, very slow. You can see before, after. So I'm going to continue with this and I'll show you the finished result. You have both methods, once again. To remove the residue, highly recommend the towel. We just come over here and just go like this. Certainly not rocket science. Uh, many of you have polished and buffed before, um, but you can definitely see exactly what I'm talking about. So what I will do is the next part of the video, I will finish this up and then I'm going to clean the threads and I'll cover that with you on how I do that because I get asked a lot about that. If you are dealing with an iron like this where your buffing wheel may not make contact inside of threads, we need a thicker buffing wheel with um, basically more fill so that we can get inside those threads and you guys will get excellent. Stay tuned. Okay guys, in this part of the video, we're gonna discuss actually cleaning the threads. Now you can see the rest of the iron is done. I mean, there's really not much else to do here. Your finish has been restored. Everything is nice and clean and protected. Now we're gonna hit inside those threads. And that's something I get asked about all the time. The easiest way to clean inside the threads, of course, is a Q-tip. But if you notice, see how I've got the thread pattern on this Q-tip and it's black? Well, if we take just a drop, again, very little, perfect, that's all we need. We go like this. Most of your soldering irons, thankfully, are about the head's width on a Q-tip. You can see how I thread it in. Now I'm going to unthread it. And all we're doing is applying our same polish inside there. And I'm just going in and out with it real quick. Now, of course, I'm not going to be able to remove this very quickly. I'll be here all day trying to do this otherwise in terms of doing it by hand. And I'm going to show you another quick way to do this or similar holes because a lot of guys don't realize how powerful this is. The information I'm giving you is very, very powerful for other applications. But that's all been treated. And you can start seeing that's coming clean. Those threads are starting to really come back to life. You also can use this same theory to polish areas that are threaded or that have pockets in them because now you've got cotton that is more fluffy, I guess is the best term to use, and it will fill up them empty gaps. So what we do to make this fit in the Dremel, you can see I put a piece of masking tape here. That increases the, the diameter slightly on our actual Q-tips. We're going to cut it in half. Now, with that slight diameter increase, we can now put it into our chuck on our Dremel, and guess what? I know you know. I'm going to turn down our RPM because, again, we don't need to go fast to do this. We need to be consistent. We're just going to come in very easy. You'll see it expand. I'm just adding a little bit of pressure, very easy, and you'll see the cotton start taking shape. There we go. And it's going in and you don't want to force it. You can see how it's starting to clean. I'm just going in and now it finally got, it went in and took the shape of our threads. And it'll start to gradually want to pull you in as it's threading those threads. But just take your time. And just stay there for a second. Let it do its job. 
cleaning out the bore. What you have is that. Okay. Now, again, I tell you, I don't, I don't actually waste anything. You can come over here and do the same pattern, and you'll see your cotton will start to flare out, and that's exactly what you want when you're polishing inside of threads, because once again, as it gets fluffier, you can then clean in between those actual threads. We go across real easy. You can start seeing the copper is starting to come to life, and all I'm doing is using that. Now, of course, you can add more of the polish if you feel you need it. I can tell you right now, you really don't. It's a very, very small amount to get the effect you want. The big thing here is taking your time and going slow. Once you get the diameter back, I recommend coming into the threads again. You'll see just how easy it is. It'll pull you in. Just stay there real easy. You can hear the, the actual Dremel's working a little bit. And all we're doing is polishing that board. And it is removing everything inside there. And you can see how black we're getting our Q-tip. And you're brand new. So how do we know we're brand new? Well, when we come over here to actually thread everything on, you can see just how easy this is. That iron is brand new. So again, when I'm giving you guys this advice, when I'm showing you this stuff, okay, I think I want to make sure that I give full disclosure that I'm really putting it up to educate. Because content creators to me, under the most part, they're making videos for them to actually get monetized by them, and that's fine, that's great. But usually they're not using their tools to make money with. Some are, not all of them. In this particular instance, if you notice, my channel is only based on what I actually do because I base my channel on my profession of working with these tools. And you can see all of my kits, all of my designs are based around that. And you can see exactly what we have here in terms of a new iron. Now my finishing touch would always be to use contact cleaner on the end of this. If you don't have contact cleaner, uh, I would definitely use alcohol to remove any oils and you're all set. This is absolutely perfect. Once you remove all oils, a little flux on the tip will make sure that you're all set to go. But as far as uh, actually having the proper amount of conduction from heat now, you certainly got, look at this, I can just come in you can see just how clean those threads are. Once again, if you feel you need more, you can always change out the Q-tip. The best thing about Q-tips is, if you use the method I just show, I've just i just shown with the Dremel tool, one Q-tip turns into two buffs. And this is pure cotton, because it's meant to be inserted in your body. So I can tell you right now, you get a beautiful clean, and you can see exactly what you're left with. Brand new. And when you thread these on, guys, another thing, do not use a lot of pressure. It's just supposed to go in here and finger tight. That's, that's fine. We don't need to use a ridiculous amount of pressure, okay? Another thing, a lot of guys don't think about this. These are brass conductors, okay? When I told you that this actual uh, polish can be used on any metal, now we've got this residual on this actual Dremel tip right here. I want to just show you something. Watch this. No abrasion, nothing. And guys say, well, why would you ever do that? Well, I can tell you right now, as these age over time, you're gonna have problems because you're gonna get that same patina and your conduction gets lost. Now, I'm just using the residual that's on, the residual polish that's actually on this actual swap. And you can already see from that to this, and you can see it's breaking it through already. If we were to hit this again, and this has got residual on here from the threads, I'll just come over here. And you can see it's breaking the patina already. This is the stuff I use, guys. I'm not kidding you. When I tell you, this is the best 
I have found, and again, 15 years of doing this to get paid for it, it's a little bit different than the guy who's in his basement soldering once every three weeks. Just light pressure, look at that. Cool thing is, Q-tip disintegrates, you're fine. You're not gonna hurt anything. Now, once we have it clean like this, we finish off with a little hand polish, take it two seconds, and you can see the shine. Then what we do is we apply a deoxid gold and it protects these, these actual conductors so that you never have to worry at least for a year. I would say they're good for up to at least five years, but once you put this on, it amplifies everything as far as conductivity. So you can definitely see the difference and how fast was that? All in real time. And again, residual. You can see this Q-tip is just black. I mean, it just shows you how fast. I'm just rubbing it, just getting some on here. We'll switch out the tip and I'll just show you. Finish this guy up real quick. I'm just rotating it. This is how little you need. Do that. Swap out your tip. Me and we've already done it. Just come over here. Light pressure, you see I'm not using any real pressure. We've got our masking tape once again as a diameter, uh, more or less spacer. Now we come back in, do it by hand. And then, and just hit it with that cotton bub. There you go. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. I got one minute left in my uh, memory card, but again, you see the final results. No abrasives, we're not using sandpaper, we're not doing anything like that. We are using uh, a nylon abrasive, I guess we wanna get technical with the uh, scotch Bright, but overall, much, much more mild, and you can see your end result if you have a new iron. So again, guys, I'll put a link to the kit if you want to check it out. Again, very, very simple kit. You will get your deoxid, you, get, you will get your polishing cloth, and of course, all the required tools, uh, minus the Dremel, of course, you will not get that. But uh, everything else uh, is pretty much self-explanatory. I think you can see exactly where we're going. Thank you all for your support. Once again, if you have questions, require quotes, or consultations, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com or through my eBay store. The links will be in the description below. Thank you again. Take care.